watching his father's sheep. He gets a visit from the pastor, this prophet, and he comes, and his name is Samuel. He's an OG. The OG comes to the house to anoint the new king of Israel, even though Saul is still king. And he comes by the house, and he says, give me your boys, because the, the Lord is saying the next king is right here in this house. And so having eight sons, of course, you bring out the oldest son. He says, no, nah, that ain't him. The Lord's saying it's not him. Second oldest, not him. Third oldest, not him. He brings out all the sons, and he says, it's not him. And then he says, Jesse says, well, I don't know what else to tell you. He said, you have any more sons? Oh, yeah, I do have one more son. His name is David. And he's out there watching sheep. He says, bring him to me. And the Lord says, this is the one right here. The Bible says he was young and he was handsome and he anointed his head with oil to be the next king of Israel. Can you imagine his brothers and how they felt about their little baby brother, little pest of a brother, being anointed king over them? Well, after this takes place, we know another thing about David. David was a talented musician. Today he would probably be rapping or making beats. But he was good at it. And so David is doing this, and, and, and the, the king saw he, he was disturbed, tormented by evil spirit. And somebody says, I know somebody in the house of Jesse named David who's a wonderful, talented musician. I, I think you should bring him into the kingdom and let him play for us. Let him play. Let him play. So they sent for David, and David got in there and started playing some good music. He wasn't playing Fetty Wap. He wasn't in there playing Chris Brown. He was playing Christian wholesome music, something that will soothe the soul. And as he's playing for him, and, and can you imagine David playing? He's, I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low. And now the king is sitting up there saying, oh, yeah, that's my jam. Nobody greater. <laughs> Nobody greater, Lord. Nobody greater than you. Ooh. You know, that's how you listen to them. <laughs> that's my jam. It's like a Nate Dogg G-Funk classic. Play that one more again, young man. He was so good. He was so good. Watch this. He was so good that, that Saul adopted him. Matter of fact, the Bible says he moved out of Jesse's home, and he says, no, he, he stays here, and he asks permission. And Jesse said, yeah, yeah, you can go serve. Now he's royalty. He's royalty in the house of King Saul. But give me the next slide. Watch this. In chapter 17, if you go back to verses 15, go back to verses 15, you're going to notice something. That even though this, this took, took place, the Bible says, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. So even though he had moved in with the king, the Bible says he still went home to do his chores. Oh, Lord Jesus. Some people and pastors, when we start to feel like we are royalty and we feel like we got a position uh, and we feel like we are somebody, uh, we forget that the real task is to smell like sheep uh, and a good shepherd uh, will always smell uh, like his sheep. Uh, if your parents bless you uh, to get a part-time job, don't forget to take out the trash, make your bed, and do your homework. He says, no, nah, I know I'm royalty and I'm in the royal court now, but I still got to go home and take care of business. You guys see that? Now watch this. So he's doing all of these things. He's doing all of these things. And the Bible says there was a, a giant, a Philistine giant by the name of Goliath. He, the Philistines are the Israelites' enemies. And this was a big man. The Bible says he stood nine feet tall. And this man stood there, and you just got to see him because he's standing there, and he's about this big. And for 40 days, he taunted 
God's people. Call them out. And y'all know how to call folk out when you want to fight. When you think you can whoop somebody, that's when you start talking. The problem is some of y'all write a check that your behind can't cash. If you're going to talk the talk, you better be able to fight and back it up. Now, she clapping like this. That's a good sign right there. She said, that's right, because these girls be doing too much. <laughs> Taunting for 40 days. Now, you got to understand that he was the original bully. Give me the next slide. He was the original bully. He was the individual, the original Debo. And anybody he messed, he touched, they trembled, they fell back, and he would come. And every time he come around, everybody said, I'm just going to tuck my chain in. Because that was Debo. And when he knocked you out, he says, anybody else want some? You want some of Debo? Beat him down, beat you down. And when he did that, everybody just, and he did that for 40 days. Well, here's David. David comes along, and David uh, is sent by his father because his older three brothers fight. They're fighting in Saul's army. And then he goes to them, and, 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 and watch what happens. He says, I need you to send your older brothers a care package. They're, they're fighting on the front line. So, so David gets the care packages, and he's just an errand boy. And he goes to give it to his brothers, and he sees this giant talking all his head. And so the giant is talking all this trash. And the giant is talking, talking, saying what he going to do. And he's engaging in what we call psychological warfare. Psychological warfare says you don't even step in because mentally you are already defeated. That's how Mike Tyson used to beat most of his opponents. They were already defeated before the bell even rang because they were scared. And so he's scaring all of the soldiers, even King Saul, who stood head and shoulders above everybody else. So he sees this, and as he's seeing this, he's looking around, he's saying, whoa, what in the world is going on here? Why are you guys allowing this man to talk all this mess? Now watch this. Look, look at your Bibles. Look at your Bibles. Watch this. Look at your Bibles. So he comes. He comes over there. Look at verses, look at, look at, look at verses uh, 26. Somebody read verses 26, 17 and 26. The Bible David, says what? David asked the men standing near him. He asked the men standing near him. What will be done for this man? He said, what's going to be done? For this man who kills the Philistine. What, what's going to be done for the man who kills this Philistine? And read. removes the disgrace from Israel. Uh-huh, read. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? In other words, he is not even in the covenant of Abraham. He says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he may defy the armies of the living God? Read. They repeated to him when they had been saying and told him, uh -huh. this is what will be done for the man who kills him. He says, this is what's going to be done. He said, tell me what's going to be done when he's defeated. Read. When Eliab, David's oldest brother. So his oldest brother heard said him what? speaking with the men. He heard him speaking with the men. He burned with anger. He burned with him, anger and he says what? What? He says, why did you come down here? Read. Well, with whom did you leave these few sheep in the wilderness? Essentially, he's saying, go back to your household choice. This is men's stuff. You are a boy. David, why are you down here? Read. I know how conceited you are. He says, I know how conceited you are, Mr. And how King. how wicked your heart is. And how wicked your heart is. Read. You came down only to watch the battle. He says, you only came to be a what? Spectator. Now watch this. How many of us, I'm not talking to you parents, send these babies here only to be spectators? When God did not call them to spectate, he called them to participate. Read, Daryl. Come on, watch this. Watch this. I want you to see something. Watch this. Now, what have I done, said David. He says, what have I done? Read. Can I even speak? Uh-huh. He, he, says, he says, what have I done? Can't I even speak? Now, listen, listen, listen. Jesse sins. His son, David, to the battle. He doesn't take them. A lot of us, I've seen parents drop their kids off and go right, right down sunset. Tell me, I got to get my hair did. And you drop your kids off to the battle. 
then how are the kids, if they have no faith, are to participate? So they become spectators. And if they're spectators as kids, they will be spectators as adults. Does this make sense? And so now, watch this. He says, uh, 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 can I just say something? Can I even speak? Why? Because he says, I'm 15 years old. I'm a teenager. And I feel like in this house, I have no voice. How many of you, young people, feel like you have no voice? You do, sweetheart? Come on. Just, it's okay. It's okay. Your, mom, your parents ain't going to spank you. Not here. Not, not, you know. Can't help it when you get home, but not, not, not in this house. You feel, and it's okay, they're young. Sometimes they feel like they have no voice. And what they have to say is so valuable. But we don't listen because they're young. And so essentially he's saying, you need to go home. And he's saying, my own family won't listen to me. My church family won't listen to me. Now... Here's the deal. Watch this. I want you to see this because I know kids don't have a long attention span. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. L look at the next verse. Look at verses 30. The Bible says what? He then turned away to someone else. He turned away to somebody else. And brought up the same matter. He brought up the same matter. Read. And the men answered him as before. And the men answered him as before. Read. When David said, when, when David said was, was heard uh -huh. and reported to Saul, uh -huh. he sent for him. And then they sent for him, read. David said to Saul. David said to Saul. Let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. So when the conversation was overheard, it got back to the king. The king sent for David. And David told King Saul, he said, don't let nobody lose sleep over this sucker. He ain't nobody. Read. Your servant will go and fight him. He says your servant will be the one that will go and fight him. Now look at his response. Read. Saul replied. Saul replied what? You are not able to go out against this Philistine. He says you are not able to go out to fight this Philistine. Why? You are only a young man. He says the only reason why you won't be able to fight is because of your age, because you're young. What is he saying? God can't use you. Because how old are you? How do you know? Twelve. You're too young. God can't use you. And that is the king of Israel, his surrogate father, telling him, God can't use y'all. Go home because you're too young. And God is saying something totally different. David says, no, we can't go out like that. We got to fight. Now, what you need to understand is David is saying, I'm not even in the army. Guess what, Saul? You saying six foot eight. This ain't even my battle. This is technically yours. Young people, do you ever feel sometime that you are fighting your parents' battles? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Your parent is the one that's suffering from depression, but you got to help fight it. Your parent is the one suffering from alcohol addiction, but you got to help fight it. Uh, your parents are the ones seeking, looking at pornography, but you got to help fight it. You saying, parents, this is your battle, but guess what? Even as a young person, I, gotta, I feel like I got to go ahead and fight this battle. Why? Because when this Goliath comes, it not only affects you, but it affects the entire nation. And it affects this entire household. So even at 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, you are called to fight. Now, I know y'all like to fight. I know, I know y'all used to. Y'all don't mess with the twins. But you got to fight the right battle. Because I, I know y'all have no problem fighting. I have seen some of the tapes. Y'all post it. I don't even know why you post it. You post your fights. We watch them. But you got to know how to fight the right enemy. And you got to know who to fight. Because David does not, when he is talked about by his brother, does not turn around and square up on his brother. That's what we do. But David says, no, the real enemy is taunting us. The real enemy is out there. and He's threatening the solidarity of this family. So now watch this. Watch this. Watch this. You're doing all these things. 
and he says he has to fight. David says, I have to take up the battle. This Goliath-sized problem in your life, if you don't take it up, is going to kill you. So you got to learn young people to take up the fight. The real fight is fighting illiteracy. Fight homelessness. Fight racism, structural racism. That's the real fight. You got to fight against legalism in the church. That is the real fight. So young people, you got to take up the, the armor of God and you got to know how to fight the real fight. It's not fighting out in the streets and acting a fool in the streets on, over at the Deer Valley Plaza. Amen, somebody. That's not the fight. It's not that fight. It's the real fight. So now watch this. Here is David. David sees this giant. Sometimes we see a giant and we say, whoa, this giant is too big. These issues are too big for me to take on this fight. But let me tell you something, if you didn't know, the real underdog was not David. The real underdog was Goliath. Because heaven placed a bet on David. <laughs> Goliath was the real underdog. And so now David says, I'm, I have to do what my parents won't do. I got to take on this fight against addiction and loneliness and depression because guess what? My parents refuse to fight. So now David, he's ready to go and he's ready to fight. Now, look at your Bibles. Look at your Bibles. Now, look at what Saul says to them in verses 33. Watch this. What does the Bible say? Read. Verse you are, you go are on, not able on. to go out against this Philistine. He says, you're him. not able to go against the Philistine. Why? You are only a young man. He says, because you're only a young man. And Read. he has been a warrior from his youth. And he has been a warrior since he was this big. He says, you can't do this. He says, because you're young and he's been a warrior since his youth. The Bible says what? Read. But David said to Saul. But David said to Saul. Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. Oh, Lord. He says, I, I got some experience. I got a resume. Read. When, when a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock. Oh, man. Imagine you're David. And you said, I'm ready to take on the battle that you won't take on. And then that person agrees with your adversary. Isn't it disheartening? When your own family and friends agree with the person that's fighting against you. And they're both saying the same thing. You're too young. Go home. And as parents, we do that. We tell them, nah, you shouldn't be fighting this because we punks. And we scared. And we afraid that God will take a young man that is 12 years old and use them because if you won't fight, he will raise up another generation to fight the battle that you too scared to fight. That was to the parents. Man, they'll, they'll do it and God will use this. Are your problems so big that it makes your God seem small? The Bible tells us back in in, 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 in 1 Samuel chapter 11, that Saul had already won a battle, that God gave him the victory, but he soon forgot. He forgot who was blessing him. He forgot what God can do. And so he started relying more on the flesh than relying on the spirit, and now he is scared. Now watch, watch the Bible. Look at verses 34. Look what he says. Your servant has been keeping this father's sheep. Lion bear comes, carried it off the sheep. From the flock, I went after it, I struck it, I rescued the sheep from its mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its hair, I struck it and killed it. Look at verse 36. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them because he defiled the armies of the living God. He dissed us. Look at verse 37. The Lord who has rescued me from the paw of the lion and the bear will rescue me from the hand of the Philistine. And so he says, look, I'm young. I may be only 15 years old, but I, I have a, a, a resume. And let me tell you something. I have history with the Lord. 
when I was in kindergarten and I was about to get jumped for my, my, my applesauce and my peanut butter and jelly sandwich uh, and the gooch was after me, yeah, I said the gooch, uh, uh, when I was about to get jumped, uh, it, it was a teacher that came out and said, you boys go home. It was God that made that teacher come out the classroom. See, I, 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 now that I'm going back to my, 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 my toddler years, I realize even though I'm a young person that God has always been watching out over me. And he's always had my back. When they started shooting at the party, I knew I should have got shot. But I was, I was, I was in the, the wrong place at the, at, at the wrong time. But God delivered me and I got home. God has always been watching out over me. And so he realized that he says, no, I'm not supposed to. I'm, I'm a young person. I'm not supposed to be able to defeat a lion and a bear. But he says, that was nothing but God. Let me tell you something. If God can deliver you in the past, he can do it in the present, and he sure enough can do it in the future. So he's looking at his faith. His faith is being built up. His faith is being built up. His faith is faith is faith. That's what's happening. He says, I know God can deliver me. Now, Saul says, okay. All right. David, that, that was impressive. A lion and a bear. Let a lion walk in here right now. So I'm going to tell you right now, he can't eat all of us. Just the slowest one. <laughs> Trip somebody down. <laughs> gone. He can't get all of us. <laughs> Real talk. Or a bear. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm up on one of these rappers like this. <laughs> Real talk. And you got to remember, the lion took, had the sheep in his mouth. Why put yourself and your life on the line? The sheep gone. He got his lamb chops. That's just one down. I'm good. As long as I'm good. Why would you risk your life? Because those weren't his sheep. Those were his daddy's sheep. He was a steward. He says, I'd rather die than to lose one of my father's sheep. He's preparing. He's a shadow of Jesus Christ to come. He says, before I lose anybody, I'll go to the cross before I lose any of my daddy's sheep. Saul says, okay, you really want to fight this giant? You really want to fight him? You that convinced you're going to fight him? He says, uh, may the force be with you. Is that what it said? Now, something like that, what does it say? That's the ghetto version of the Bible. Uh, he says in the end of verse 37, he says, all right, go. And may the Lord be with you. You ever bless somebody but really didn't mean it? It was just cliche. And he, he doesn't even believe his own blessing. And so he says, okay, you want to fight? At least before you go in the bow, son. Come on. Stand right here. I'm going to hook you up. I'm going to hook you up. Come on. Come on, Fred. So he says, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that you're taken care of, and I'm going to make sure that you have, stay up here, Freddie. Stay up here for a sec. Let's hook this young man up. He's about to go in battle, Freddie. Come on. Put that on. Put your arms through it. And he's going to make sure that... <coughs> He has everything that he needs. You got to have a shield, bro. Have a shield. Put, put your arm through it, man. <laughs> Goliath's going to tear you up. <laughs> you got your sword, which is your gun nowadays. And, uh, you know, you know, there it is. There it is. You ready to go into battle? He said, I'm going to hook you up. <clears throat> He said, I'm going to take care of you. So when you go fight this giant, you still don't have a chance. <laughs> At least you're going to look good dying. <laughs> it ain't going to be my fault. I'm gonna, and, and see, this is my, this is my stuff. It's my shield, my breastplate. And he hooked him up. Now, I want you to see something. Stay there, young man. Stay there, stay there, stay there. Stay there. Before Steph Curry came on the scene, David was the first young man, superstar, to sport Under Armour. 
It's in the Bible, right? He says, you got everything you need. Now, now the, 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 Bible, the Bible says this. He, look, look at verse 38. Just, just read it. Just read it. We're going to stay here. Read it. Read it, Daryl. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic. His own tunic? He put a coat of armor on him. Uh-huh. And a bronze helmet on his head. Okay, now, watch this. Now, look cool, man. Some girls in the audience may get you a number after this. Just look cool. Now, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> he gave him sword, tune in, but he put a helmet, and the helmet was made of what? Your Bible said, now if you look at your Bibles, that's the only piece, okay, of armor that we know what's made out of. It was made out of what? Bronze. If you came to Bible class last Wednesday, you would know what bronze symbolizes. Gold, divinity, silver, redemption, bronze, judgment, judgment. So before you went to battle, he says, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my judgment on you. Parents, this is what we do to those kids. Look at her dress. Sagging. Belt skinny jeans, these kids today, they all messed up. I don't know why these kids can't do We place judgment. When if we go back to the 60s, 70s, and 80s, nobody was talking about your cross colors and your overalls. Am I right about it? You dressed the same way and your parents got on you. No, we didn't wear skinny jeans. Y'all going to regret it later, I'm telling you. But don't judge them. We place our judgment on them and wonder why they don't want to come to church. They're young people. Stop judging them prematurely. They're young. They will get there. You talk with them and walk with them. Am I right about it? Don't judge the young people. I know what I was wearing at that age, and I was wearing it because I wanted to go to the freak nick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look at all my 90s babies. Look at the 90s. Y'all probably seen you there. You there. I tried to get y'all number. I was trying to go to the freak nick. But I couldn't go, Freddie. <laughs> they don't even know what the freak nick is. Oh, Lord. Don't, don't, don't Google it. All right. <laughs>